Hi, all. I'm Matt Mason, General Manager at Zillow. I sat down with two top industry experts, Sarita Dua from the Ask Sarita team and Jeremy Larson from the Larson Real Estate team to discuss how they navigate competitive markets and multiple offer scenarios. Here's what they had to say. And so what we have right now is, um, you know, a scenario with, with low inventory where it's, you know, you've, you're spending X amount per month. Um, ROI is typically how most agents are evaluating the success of their premier agent uh, performance and the, the return uh, on their investment. But with situations and marketplaces like this, it's kind of suspended, right? It's kind of a suspended return. And that, that ROI on the money that you're spending today may not actually happen for three, six months down the road. And so my, the question here to both of you is, have you changed kind of how you evaluate, you know, how you're measuring the performance uh, of Zillow advertising uh, as a result of the low, low inventory or a super competitive marketplace? Yeah, I mean, for us, we have not really changed the approach. And um, the ROI is, is such an interesting thing to look at because we have to go deeper than what the numbers tell us because... Every because first off, buying is emotional, right? It, whenever you're buying something, it is emotional based. Whether it's a it's a pair of shoes, it's a car, or it's a home, we're excited. We're buying. We're telling everybody that we're buying. Sellers, it's 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 more about the number. They want to get that number, and so buyers are extremely important because the emotions are high. There's a much higher chance that you're going to get a referral, and so when we look at the ROI, we also have to keep in mind that the referrals down the road that are gonna come from this transaction are incredibly valuable. And so, you know, we're huge fans of relationships and referrals and doing client appreciation parties, handwritten notes, calling once a quarter to check in. We do all that stuff. And so, you know, we didn't change any approach right now to what we're doing as far as the, as far as looking at our advertising with Zillow. Uh, but we look at the ROI a little different because there's what the numbers are telling, but then you also have to look at the referrals that you've gotten from all those clients and transactions throughout the process too. And so there's a lot, there's, there's a big X factor with the referrals. So this isn't the time to make knee jerk reactions. Like I did at the beginning, I cut like my cable bill and some things that like, okay, I subscribed to this app. I didn't even know I used it. Right. It was some, some low hanging fruit. But because things are suspended, like you said, and things take longer, it's really important to have multiple pillars for business. The same thing isn't going to get you the same result if people are, some people are just risk averse and are not going to make big changes at a time where they don't know about the, the long-term effects of their employment and other things. So for me, my top resources are my database, which is my sphere and my past clients. Um, and then agent referrals are huge for me. And, and this is not in any particular order. And, and, and for number three for me is my Zillow leads. And here's my thing, right? If I'm going to pay an agent 25% referral fee, like Jeremy has somebody coming from Santa Cruz to Portland. And, you know, but like, let's look at the ROI for the, to the Zillow leads. Like, I'm not going to do anything for if I pay a dollar and just get a dollar back. To be honest, I don't want to pay a dollar and get $2 back because after I pay one to Uncle Sam and then my original dollar, I'm still not really ahead. Um, I am in the sense that the X factor with the, the client for life piece, but I want to see three X or more ROI. And that's what I see. My Zillow leads in terms of those people that come through Zillow, they know me better than they know myself sometimes because they've done their homework. My Zillow reviews, I don't have thousands, but I have like 246. I think the last time I checked, I'm human. It's like a 4.9. Uh, but I, I've been consistently best of Zillow and they are reading up, right? Just like we do when we go to Amazon and we're thinking about buying something, we're reading the reviews. I read the, a couple of fives, then I go straight to the ones and understand, do I want to buy that product or don't I, right? So they, so to me, now more than ever, these educated consumers that value information, that are resourceful to get it and need a partner to guide them. They don't need me if they're going to buy a house every month. But because I sell two to three a week, I have more experience than they do. So if they're going to buy a house once every five years and don't have the experience that I do, they need me as a partner. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to check out the other videos in this three-part series for more helpful tips on how to navigate competitive markets and multiple offer scenarios. Thanks. Thanks.